In the last episode we looked at how the tides of the planet Echo, have shaped evolution so far. At the base of the ecosystem the autoratrophs had developed green or dark blue to black pigments, or both, to best absorb light qualities from the G-type Wallace star with its white light or the red dwarf star Sarawak, with its red light, respectively. Thank you to Trio of Dominance, who in the comments, pointed out that phytoplankton would be better using blue purple or black pigments to absorb red light. The input is appreciated. In the last few months Grover, one of our crew members, has headed a small team in raising a population of Earth species siphonophores, known as Portuguese Man of War. Although not strictly a jellyfish, this species is an interesting relative. The siphonophore is actually a colonial organism composed of four casts of genetically identical creatures. But the catch is that each of the four forms specializes in a different function. This image shows how the four different siphonophore forms work together for the benefit of the survival of the colonial organism. One group specializes in catching prey in the form of tentacles that harpoon prey with nematocysts. A second form keeps the animal near the surface of the water taking on the form of an inflated sail. The remaining forms specialize in reproduction and digestion of food. After some deep discussions with the crew, we decided that it would be unethical to introduce Earth species to Echo, since it is developing well and doesn't need any help at this time. However the same cannot be said for Echo's twin planet Zia. Our probes report that Zia is stuck in the random RNA stage. We think that this is due to the very small size of the oceans. For this reason we have approved Zia for terraforming operations, with the hopes of forming a human colony. More on this later. The population of siphonophores Grover has been cultivating will be introduced to the oceans of Zia, when they are ready. Here is a more detailed look at the orbit of Echo and Zia around the two stars. This helps to show how summer, winter and autumn and spring are experienced on these planets. Earthquakes and volcanism are more frequent between winter and spring. This is when the planets are slipping into the gravitational well of the other star, and this shift triggers seismic activity, generating immense heat within the planet cores. This is how planet Echo looks during Wallace summer. The oceans look blue. The Nervosphera, kelp is green in pigmentation, best suited to absorbing the white light for photosynthesis. You can see that the atmosphere is not blue like that of Earth as the composition is still quite low in oxygen. As the twin planets move into the midway point, between the two stars, the planet enters its deep winter phase. This is almost like a brief ice age. The polar ice caps expand at this time, lowering the ocean depth by 15 meters. As the ice expands it scrapes the seabed, eroding and stirring up minerals into the ocean. At this time of year plant growth slows to a standstill as light levels drop. Many species enter dormancy and allow their leaves to fall away. The basket corals release their spawn, while the siphon robustus swim deep into underwater chasms. They gather around volcanic vents feeding of chemotrophic microbes. Moving forward in time, Echo and Zia have continued moving through their orbit, and are now located around Sarawak. The warmth of the red dwarf star has reduced the extent of the ice sheets at the poles, and the sea level has risen back to its pre-winter state. A dark blue pigmented variant of the Nervosphera has rapidly grown, a perennial. It supplanted the green version. We will call this Cerulean Sphera. Other than color, it also has larger lobate round leaves, better adapted to capturing light. The Siphon Robustus has returned from the deep chasms, where it was sheltering during winter. It is now free to filter feed in the kelp forest once again. We have finished observations of planet Echo in this time period. Before we jump ahead, we must first drop off some auto factories to mine materials and begin work on printing an enclosed colony for our colonists to live in. This is phase 1 of terraforming planet Zia. These cubes are the auto factories. 
they are capable of mining materials, and 3D printing any hardware equipment needed. They can even make more auto factories. While they work, we will prepare to jump forward through time a few million years. We can't wait to see what will happen with the life forms evolving on planet Echo. I just want to take a moment to say thank you, we reached 70 subscribers this week. Outstanding. Until next time, see you soon.